now we go into the anatomy of the kidney. Okay, so now we're going to look at the big, we're going to look at the kidney, and we're going to take a look at nephrons. The nephron is a functional unit of the kidney. Okay, so we look at this big kidney, we look at this tiny little slice, and that's here, and then we're going to see one little nephron. Okay, and the nephron, when it expands, it has many different parts. It's made up of the glomerulus, which is here, and it's made of the rest of the renal tubules. And there's many different renal tubules. First of all, there's the proximal convoluted tubule. So it's proximal, it's, next, it's very proximal to the glomerulus, and it's convoluted. That means it's all twisty, as you can see here. Okay, And as you go down that proximal convoluted tubule, eventually it's going to descend, and it's going to become the loop of Henle. And it's called a loop because it goes down and it loops back up. Okay, So that's the loop of Henle. And if you keep going, then now you're distal to the glomerulus. So you're now at the distal convoluted tubule. Again, it's convoluted. Convu convoluted, you're going to go down, eventually you're going to get to the collecting ducts. Okay, so that is one nephron. I want to emphasize that this is the functional unit of the kidney. This is how your urine gets filtered, blood goes in, and it gets filtered into the tubules, and then you, um, this is where you excrete waste and reabsorb stuff that you want, and you filter and you make sure that you have all the sodium balance, things like that. Now, there are many of these all throughout the kidney, okay? That's the, that's the thing I want to emphasize. So you have one here, one nephron, another nephron here, and a nephron, nephron here, and it's all throughout the kidney. This is going out, this, these, this filtering and, ex, and excretion is all happening throughout the kidney. All right, now I want to zoom out and look at the overall overall picture of the, the gross, bigger, bigger view of the kidney and talk about the renal cortex. And this is the outer region of the kidney, as you can see on the bottom right. This is the renal cortex, so outer region. All of this is the outer region of the kidney. So that's all that's the renal cortex. And next is the renal medulla. Renal medulla here, that's the inner central region of the kidney. So that's this part, okay? Now the other thing I want to note is that your nephron is going to traverse both the renal cortex and the medulla. You're going to have the glomerulus and the proximal convoluted tubules up here, and then it's going to descend in the loop of Henle into the renal medulla, and it's going to come back up, back into the, um, into the cortex. You're going to have the distal convoluted tubule, and then you're going to have the uh, collecting duct, which again descends. It's going to descend down into the medulla, and then your collecting duct will empty into the ureter. It's going to go through the renal calyces, which are this white, these things right here, and it's going to go into the pelvis. This is the renal pelvis, and then it's going to go into the ureters, down into the bladder. Okay, so now we have our ureters draining from the renal pelvis down into the bladder. Now I just want to talk about the three locations where the ureter most commonly becomes obstructed uh, because this is clinically relevant. So location number one is the ureteral pelvic junction. Okay, Location number one on the top right you can see here. Just pay attention to the name, it just tells you everything already. Ureteral pelvic, so junction between the ureter, ureter and the pelvis of the kidney. So that's right here, can become obstructed. As we already saw in that disease of the same name, ureteral pelvic junction obstruction. Next is the pelvic inlet, as you can see here. Pelvic inlet is refers to the location where the ureter crosses the external iliac. And this place is prone to obstruction because the external iliac already is pressing a little bit on that ureter. So it's a little more prone to obstruction already. So pelvic inlet is number two. Number three is the ureteral vesicle junction. This is the reason why I tell you the patient to pay attention to the name because so easy to get confused between ureteral pelvic, ureteral vesicle, what's the difference? Well, vesicle refers to the bladder, so this is the junction where the ureter meets the bladder, okay, and this can also become obstructed. So ureteral pelvic junction, number two, what was that? The pelvic inlet, number three, what was it? Ureteral vesicle junction. Okay, now we're gonna talk about renal blood flow now. So, we have our big fat renal artery, as you can see here, coming in from the aorta, and it's going to supply all the kidney. It's going to, to do that, it's going to branch out a lot. So renal artery is going to branch out into something called segmental arteries, which are not labeled, but it's pretty much these smaller ones, okay? Segmental arteries is different, the different segments of the kidney. And then these segmental arteries are going to branch out into the interlobar arteries. So interlobar blood vessels are right here, okay? Now these interlobar, it's going to keep branching and branching. So interlobar arteries are going to branch into the arcuate blood vessels. So these are getting smaller and smaller. I'm gonna zoom in just to show you, to make so that you get the idea. So arcuate blood vessels. Arcuate arteries are gonna branch even smaller into interlobular arteries. 
okay, intralobular artery. So I just want to take a pause and review. Renal artery to what? To segmental artery. Just think about it. Segmental renal, segmental interlobular, arcuate, and then uh, interlobular. Now interlobular arteries are going to turn are going to feed into the little nephrons. Remember the nephrons are those tiny little functioning units of the kidney. Um, they're too small to be shown in this picture. But next is so imagine that we have our interlobular artery here. Interlobular. This is a blown up picture. And so interlobular arteries are going to feed into the afferent arterial. Now the afferent arterial is going to run into the glomerulus. And blood can either be filtered in to the renal tubules or it can keep going. Okay, 20% gets filtered into the tubules, 80% keeps going into the efferent arterial. When it gets filtered in the renal tubule, it's not blood anymore, it's just some filtrate. It's just the stuff in the blood that got filtered through. And then the rest of the blood goes into the efferent arterial. And then efferent arterial will now go and branch into little peritubular capillaries. So it's going to be little, tubular, little capillaries that are going to supply the little or tubules of our nephron. So that's how our nephron gets blood from these peritubular capillaries. And then another one that we have here is the vasa recta. Okay, so I'm a little behind here. Vasa recta. These are also little capillaries. Same thing as the parallel tubular capillaries. The only difference is these are the ones that supply the loop of Henle. So eventually these little capillaries are going to eventually go into the venous outflow. And that's it for renal blood flow. So again, why don't you review with me again? Why don't you think about it yourself? So renal artery, let's try to actually erase all these. Renal artery goes into what? Renal artery goes into segmental arteries. Segmental arteries turn into what? Interlobar arteries. Next is arcuate blood vessels. Next is interlobular arteries. And then now with the interlobular arteries, we've zoomed in now, what's next? We have the afferent arterial, and then into the glomerulus, either into tubules or into the efferent artery, arterial, and then finally venous outflow. So that's it for our renal blood flow and the rest of our anatomy. We're going to have talked about the glomerulus next.